I'm Peter Glebus. I am a neurologist with a subspecialty training in cognitive neurology. Uh, my The majority of time I spend uh, uh, seeing patients with cognitive disorders, but I also see patients with a general neurology uh, problems as well. I do a lot of teaching. I do also research in cognitive neurology area. Many people confuse the dementia and Alzheimer's disease. Dementia is overall a general term. It tells us that person has cognitive problems, whatever cognitive problem could be. It could be memory problem. It could be you know, problems with navigation. It could be problems with the language. Uh, but it is severe enough to affect person's independence, meaning that you know, they are forgetful enough that they can, might start forgetting to take their medications or might start um, getting lost, et cetera. So that's why we say it's almost like a stage of the disease. So it's this, this medical social uh, def definition. Now, this general umbrella term dementia is not a specific disease. The specific diseases that can cause people to, be, to have dementia dementia or to be at the dementia stage. And Alzheimer's disease is one of the most frequent cause of the uh, uh, dementia syndrome. So now Alzheimer's disease is a slowly progressive neurodegenerative disorder. Highest risk factor for that is aging. A higher aging population has a higher incidence of Alzheimer's disease. The, but we can see it in younger people, obviously, as well. Alzheimer's disease, the biochemical in the brain, there are several changes, specific changes that define the Alzheimer's disease, that is abnormal amyloid formation, another protein tau changes, um, that affects the areas of the brain, most frequently the memory areas initially, and that's why it presents with a slowly progressive degradation of the memory. So, uh, you know, just to summarize, the Alzheimer's disease is a slowly progressive disorder. Um, it is a, the prevalence of it, the incidence of it increases with age. Uh, most uh, frequently it affects the memory, but it can also affect other areas initially as well. As disease progresses through the brain, other areas of cog cognitive areas are being affected as well. We're talking about language. People start having difficulty finding words. People start having difficulty navigation and, uh, and similar. There are genetic Alzheimer's disease. True genetic are very rare. That is when there is a, a specific gene that runs in the family. But majority of the Alzheimer's disease are the it's, it's interaction between your genetics and environment, not the true like a genetic genetic disorder. The disease, the biochemical changes in the brain can start 10 to 15 or 20 years before the first symptom starts. Okay, so there is this long period of no symptoms whatsoever. But then something happens and we still do not know completely what happens that, you know, it starts going into the symptomatic phase. But the symptoms are mild initially as expected as disease progresses. Signs are objectively measurable, uh, but the person is still independent. So that would be the mild cognitive impairment stage. But as disease progresses, the, cogn the cognition gets more impaired, then uh, that's we say, and that starts affecting independence. That's when we say the person has entered dementia stage. So that would be staging. And then dementia itself is a mild, moderate, or severe. There are other uh, um, classifications, but I like this more simple, mild, moderate, and severe um, uh, uh, because it gives us also, it's practical. In the mild stage, person still can be fairly independent or with a little supervision. In moderate stage, they need more supervision. Obviously, severe stage, they need more supervision and help. So the Rough classification, the staging would be a mild cognitive impairment stage while they're still, they are symptomatic, but they're independent. And when the independence starts eroding, that's when we say it's dementia stage. The history of disease progression is probably one of the main things that actually allows us to understand that we're dealing here with Alzheimer's disease. Uh, the reason I'm saying, because as I said, the Age is the biggest risk factor for developing of Alzheimer's disease. And g going further, people with other disorders can still on top develop also Alzheimer's disease. Pathology in the brain can exist for 10 to 20 years. That pathology might not be, well, the pathologist there might not be doing anything, and the other disease actually is the one that is causing the problem. So as I said, the history has to make sense that, you know, it is, it, you know, it acts like Alzheimer's disease. Um, then we do the uh, f uh, cognitive evaluation, you know, uh, from, you know, uh, several minute to several hour cognitive evaluation. And again, there are specific patterns we're looking that would be associated with underlying Alzheimer's disease. 
Um, uh, the next step, usually we get a, a good quality brain scan, just to make sure that we're not missing anything else, you know, big strokes, tumors, bleeds, or anything uh, uh, similar. Um, certain metabolic problems can cause at least mi at the mild stages similar problems, so we do some blood work to exclude B12 deficiencies, thyroid problems. Um, and now we do have already these uh, biomarker studies where we can actually pinpoint the actual pathology in the brain. Okay, and uh, or either get the special scan, CAT scan, or uh, uh, to look for those proteins in the cerebrospinal fluid, and that uh, actually confirms the disease. Again, you have to be a, a, a careful because if the clinically it does not act like Alzheimer's disease, but you find the biomarkers of Alzheimer's disease, those biomarkers, that pathology might not be the one that is causing clinical problem. And again, because again, that pathology might be um, a, a, a there for a long time. And we know from the autopsy studies that uh, many cognitively healthy people who die for other reasons and go, go for autopsy, they might have a full-blown Alzheimer's disease pathology in the brain, but they never had symptoms. Again, it's a little bit more complicated. As I said, the issue is com it's not straightforward. It's complicated. But with, the, but, uh, with enough experiences, you, you, you start understanding it. We want to have a meaningful treatment for these patients. And one of the latest advancements, we're waiting. Uh, uh, it was already FDA cleared you know, for, for treatment. We're still waiting for certain uh, final touches when it comes, can we prescribe the medications, but actually the medications that would alter the disease progression. So far, what we have, you know, what, what is in the pipeline, what probably will be soon prescribed, uh, th uh, they don't stop or reverse the progression. They just slow down the progression. But that's definitely an excellent step towards the you know, the, the right direction. As I said, you know, dementia is a syndrome. If you look at it as a syndrome, it's, it's you know, cognitive impairment that causes, that affects independence, okay? So Alzheimer's is the most common, but strokes can cause dementia, so it would be the vascular type of dementia, vascular cognitive impairment. Um, the second most common neurodegenerative disorder would be dementia with Lewy bodies, which clinically presents differently than Alzheimer's, can present differently than Alzheimer's disease, uh, frontotemporal dementia, and there are rarer cases like Parkinson's disease-associated dementia or, or um, uh, cortical basal syndrome, et cetera. So the, the most common Alzheimer's, then the, the second most common would be vascular um, then we have dementia with Lewy bodies, frontotemporal dementia, and other causes of dementia. The, the diseases that make people lose their independence due to the neurodegenerative process. We heavily rely on neuropsychological testing on a full, full cognitive evaluation. Um, the brain scans, structural or functional brain scans, are more to exclude any other pathology that could be causing cognitive problems. Um, the treatment, there is no specific approved treatment for mild cognitive impairment, um, but, but we definitely recommend the cognitive uh, therapy for that, the cognitive memory therapy for that, um, also to make sure that people uh, implement lifestyle changes that could push away or slow down the progression if it is a progressive condition that would to make sure the regular physical activity, the Mediterranean type diet, um, uh, social interactions, all those things that were proven to be healthy for cognition.